Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Just before we do go and get started with this video, uh, the biggest thank you for the video from East Midlands to Ibiza. It was great to have such a good reception getting back on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'm so excited for the next couple of months and making some consistent content on YouTube. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about CPDLC, which uh, if nobody knows what CPDLC stands for, it's Controller Pilot Data Link Communications. So on your screen, you'll see a little snippet of a pre-departure clearance coming through the Phoenix aircraft. And basically what we're going to talk about today is how you use CPDLC. So there's two ways in which you use CPDLC. So you can either use it when you're on the ground to go and get yourself a pre-departure clearance, or you can go and use CPDLC when you're airborne and then go and talk to your en route controller. So we're going to split this video into sort of two sections. So our first section is going to be about pre-departure clearances. And then our second section sort of this video. So this is going to be the first intro to discuss the PDCs of the pre-departure clearances. Then the second one is to discuss the en route CPDLC and how you use that. So you've probably heard the term PDC, which if you don't know what it means, it stands for a pre-departure clearance. So pre-departure clearance is basically calling up a controller via your aircraft and requesting your clearance through that. Again, it's uh, it's going to reduce the frequency workload for the controller. And it also means that you can set up in peace without having to try and check in. Or the worst thing is when you get told stand by your number four for clearance, then you sort of are waiting around to get your clearance and you can't really get on with planning your flight or setting up your aircraft because you're busy waiting for the controller to call you back. So basically, you'll be doing the controller a massive favor by requesting a pre-departure clearance. So before you can get a pre-departure clearance, you've got aircrafts that have got CPDLC natively built in. So we're going to mainly talk about aircrafts that have got CPDLC natively built in. There are some aircrafts that don't have it built in. The only real aircrafts that have got it natively built in uh, are the Phoenix and the Fly by Wire. I think there might be maybe one or maybe, I think there's another one more payware sort of uh, high fidelity aircraft modern airliner that has got uh, CPDLC natively built into it. Uh, but we're going to do this video sort of based around the, uh, the Phoenix A320. So where do you start with CPDLC? Well, it's not a case of that you can just sort of load up your aircraft and it's going to work instantly so you have to go to a website called hoppies a cars uh, and basically that's what connects you up to the server to be able to request the pre-departure clearance and yada 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 so i'm going to leave a link to this website in the description below so basically go to the website fill in what it says your full name email address and it always asks you for the anti-abuse riddle what is a man's best friend and i mean if you uh if you're not 100 sure on what that one is as it says google it but uh yeah register go to your email and you'll get a uh, you get a hoppies a cars code and then in your phoenix aircraft so when you when you load up the phoenix aircraft it pops up with this sort of background display which you then have sort of in the background while you're flight simming you simply pick that code up and chuck it into there and hit apply. And that is you connected up to the Hoppies ACARS server. And now you can do everything in terms of requesting a pre-departure clearance, in terms of connecting up to an on-route controller when you get airborne. So that's the start of getting yourself connected up on a, a, for a or getting yourself connected up ready to start using CPDLC. Now you're all set up on the, the ACARS server. How do you then go about of knowing which controller does have the CPDLC capabilities, which controllers don't have the CPDLC capabilities? So not every controller that you fly with will have that compatibility. Uh, and there's two ways in which you can find out the information as to whether they do or whether they don't. So I'm going to put a few images on the screen at the moment, which will basically show you a couple of controllers and, uh, and their CPDLC logon codes. So that lock on code is going to be really important. And you'll see when we switch over to the actual SIM when we're putting these that are putting this station in to get the clearance, how important that that code is going to be. So when you go into VATSPY, so I use VATSPY. I know some people use uh, VATAWARE or VATTASTIC, some sort of VAT SIM map to be able to see the controller. Under controller information, if you click in controller information, a lot of controllers have a little code next to their name and... It'll be 
uh, CPDLC station code on or CPDLC and then in square brackets the airport iCal or just some sort of little code. It's usually a uh, it's usually a four letter code, and that station name or code name is very important and it's one you've got to remember. So basically, whenever you go into the control information, be it through some sort of external VATSIM map or vPilot itself to go and grab the controller's information, you will see that CPDLC code and then from there, you can prepare to connect up to CPDLC with them. If they don't have that in their information, then it is unlikely that they are going to be using CPDLC and be able to offer you a pre-departure clearance. And if that is the case, then simply you don't have to worry about this part. And unfortunately, as much as it's a nice thing to have, especially when you're on the ground trying to get a clearance, you simply just have to call up on voice. And welcome into the cockpit. So hopefully that first part of the video, just discussing about CPDLC and what it entails, gave you a brief idea of what it's all about. So again, this video is going to be split into two parts. The two forms of CPDLC that we're going to be looking at is when you're on the ground, and also when you get airborne. So when you're on the ground, it's gonna be for the pre-departure clearance stuff and then the controller pilot data link communication stuff when we get airborne with the en route controller. So I'm gonna leave a little image on your screen which is gonna be our ground controller and you'll see his logon code again. As I said at the start of this video and, uh, and in the intro to this video, you can go and get this either through VATSPY or VPILOT, literally by double tapping on the name of the controller so for example we're on stance to ground at the moment so double tapping on stance to ground and it pop it pops up with their controller information so it say something like voice eight is on 127 decimal 125 whatever the uh, whatever the frequency is and then it say something potentially about cpdlc one main thing to note about cpdlc as well is that not every controller does use this so there's no guarantee that just because you use it the controller is also using it but as you can tell in this video, the ground controller is using it and their logon code is Echo Golf Sierra Sierra, which is nine times out of 10. If you are calling a ground controller for a pre-departure clearance, nine times out of 10, the reply you get back is their iCal code. So for example, we're at Stansted, it's Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. If you was a Heathrow requesting a pre-departure clearance from a ground controller, most likely they would have Echo Golf Lima Lima and, uh, and vice versa. Again, it doesn't just have to be a ground controller. It could be the tower controller that's doing that. It could be the approach controller that's doing the responsibilities of ground. But let's assume it's a ground controller. That's who we usually request a clearance from. So that's uh, who we're going to be picking the pre-departure clearance up from. So what do you do in the Phoenix? So we're going to speak just about the Phoenix at the moment. We're going to speak how you get a clearance natively via the Phoenix aircraft. So what you're going to do is you're going to come down to your uh, your Mukdu menu and then you begin into the uh, the Atsu menu. And then once you get to Atsu, you begin to the AOC menu and then ATC requests. And there's two different menus. It's one via the AOC menu, which is where you'll be getting your, uh, your pre-departure clearance and the ATC menu, which is the one we'll be using when we get airborne and we talk to the on-route controller. So we're going to go to pre-departure clearance. And we're going to fill in all these details. So you fill in all of these details, which you'll then go and send across to the controller. So we're on the ground at London Stansted, and we are going to be flying across to Glasgow. Echo, Golf, Papa, Foxtrot. I've already put in the flight plan. We know we know to expect the Utava One Romeo departure because that's what I uh, that's what I know would be going on this route anyway. Uh, so Stansted, Echo Golf Sierra Sierra, and Echo Golf Papa Foxtrot. Obviously, your origin, your destination. Then your ATC call sign, which is the one you're connected up to the network with. So we are easy 232 whiskey. And then we are gate 25 left. Eight information is alpha at the moment, because I had a quick check of the ADIS before I started recording. Aircraft type, we're an Airbus A320 aircraft and station. So again, everything else there, you've been able to get in pretty easily. Gate number, you've been able to see from outside your aircraft. ATIS information, you've had to listen to the ATIS or check the text ATIS. And aircraft type, obviously, you've been able to grab pretty easily. They don't need to be exactly accurate. The gate number, if it's not 100% accurate, doesn't really matter. The ATIS information shouldn't really matter too much if it's not accurate. Try and make sure that there is ac it is accurate in case the system doesn't like you sending incorrect information or whatnot. Uh, but then it comes back to the main thing. So you need to put in the station, which is Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. So remember, we uh, 
we had that PDC logon code or the CPDLC logon code which was ECHOGOV00, that was the ground controller in which we're going to request the clearance from. So we're going to go ECHOGOV00 and we are going to go send there. So by sending that, it's gone to the ground controller and hopefully, fingers crossed, we will get a reply back on, uh, on that clearance. So now, obviously moving on to the next thing, where the hell do you grab this clearance from? How do you speak to the controller via your plane? So it's through these menus, which are your data link control and display units. So what we're going to do is we're going to press BRT on both of these, brighten them up on, uh, on both displays. And we'll do the same on the right one. And simply, it is now a case of, uh, of waiting for our clearance from ground. What will happen is you'll get a little, uh, a little ping up here. You see where it says ATC message? You'll just have to wait for this to illuminate blue. And then when that does illuminate blue, that should mean that we've had a uh, we've had a message come through for our uh, our pre departure clearance. So hopefully that will come through in a few seconds. And there you go, just like that. That is the uh, the pre departure clearance that come through from us from Stance to Ground. So you probably heard that bing, which will be the ATC message. Look, you can see it's just uh, just illuminating up here. So what we're going to do is go to click that in, so it gets rid of the uh, gets rid of the warning, and you can see the message come up uh, coming up here. So very 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 good learning point here, because I had to resend that in the time that I waited for it to come through, uh, because I put in the wrong call sign. I put in the call sign Easy Two Three Two Whiskey, I think. And we're call side easy 252 whiskey. So again, it comes back to the point that is a great point in the uh, in the video to make sure that you definitely do put in the right call sign. So what we're simply gonna do is we're gonna click Roger. Well, let, let's let's have a read through the uh, the flight plan first. So we're cleared to Glasgow, runway 22, departure via the Utava 1 Roma departure. It's called 7701. So uh, let's go and put in 7701 down there and we'll uh we'll turn that on so we're just going through the uh through the clearance this is the clearance that we would get on uh on a voice if we obviously wasn't doing it through cpdlc uh school 7701 which we've inputted our information is bravo when ready call 121725 which is the ground frequency and then you can click pay uh, pg minus and plus and then that just says if unable revert to voice excellent so we uh we're happy with that so we'll reply with roger so we'll click the uh the click the button which is for roger and we'll uh we'll go and send back and excellent that will uh that will go and send back to the controller and then you'll get a message received by atc and that is how you do a pre-departure clearance through uh through your aircraft so and there are some other ways in which you can do a pre-departure clearance as well. So there is a program that we did speak about in the intro called Easy CPDLC, which is about uh, requesting a pre-departure clearance if you've not got it natively built in. So it works exactly the same way as what as I, as what have, as what I've just shown you in the Phoenix, just that it's done on a separate program. We're not going to look at Easy CPDLC for the pre-departure clearances, but again download the application and you'll work out how to use it you go to the hc you do request clearance everything that you would file in the phoenix like your origin your hc call sign your gate number the station that it's going to would be exactly the same in this program again remember that easy cpd easy cpdlc is only needed if the aircraft has not got it natively built in so the only aircrafts that do actually have cpdlc natively built in at the moment is the phoenix uh i think the fly by wire might have it as well i think maybe there's one or two more aircrafts maybe that haven't got it built in but your aircrafts like the uh, the atr the 737 uh the a310 i don't think have got these sort of your big airlines the crj that we've got in microsoft flight sim the kuro the kuro 787 all these big airline aircrafts don't have this functionality natively built in so you have to use a different program to request this functionality so basically now what we need to do we've got our pre-departure clearance we can now go and call the ground controller and simply request push now we've got our clearance he should happily uh happily give us push 
and that is how you get a pre-departure clearance through uh, through CPDLC. So I will uh, I will see you in about half a second for the next part of this video. So hopefully you're still keeping with me. That was the first part about CPDLC and grabbing a PDC when you're on the ground. Now we're going to move into part two, which is now going to be talking about CPDLC and its levels once you get airborne and then speaking with an en route controller. So CPDLC is absolutely brilliant. Again, when you're on en route control, it can be really, really, really busy on these sectors in VATSIM. They can be big sectors with one controller. One controller controlling 25, 30 aircrafts. It's not easy. It's not easy for the controller at all. Uh, so you can, again, use CPDLC to connect up to that controller and communicate via your aircraft. Note, two main things with en route CPDLC. One being that just because you are connected up onto CPDLC and you are talking to the controller via your aircraft, it does not mean you can mute the frequency. It's a very, 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 very big misconception that people think just because you're connected up onto CPDLC means that you can mute the frequency and you don't have to listen until the end of the sector. Because sometimes, I know on Vatsim, we all fly on there to enjoy the network and it to be busy and stuff like that. But it's not always that straightforward. Uh, sometimes you like to chill a little bit, but still have the ATC, but not have to listen to a really congested frequency. I understand. I totally feel you because I'm exactly the same sometimes. Uh, but yeah, you cannot mute the frequency. You've still got to be listening to frequency. Even you can maybe have it toned down a little bit. Uh, I mean, once you become experienced on the network, you know roughly the sort of instructions that you're going to be given from a new controller and stuff like that so because a lot of the messages can't come through cpdlc via your plane there's some message that physically can't be sent in that they need a different response into which you can reply back through cpdlc so it's not a hundred percent easy then second thing and this is more so for once you or when you're checking in on cpdlc when you're arriving into a sector so in the video we're obviously going to look at cpdlc as if we're departing out of a sector but if you're let's say arriving in from copenhagen and you're flying into london for example and you're wanting to connect up to one of the london sectors great uh the one main thing about cpdlc is that you must talk to the controller on voice first the controller has to identify you by giving you a squawk or some divisions do it different. Some some give you a, a squawk of 1,000, like a standby squawk, and you're identified through that. Or some, like us in the UK, we give you a squawk uniquely identified to yourself. So it's important that you do control that, uh, contact that controller on voice first before you connect up to the CPDLC. So you could say something like, uh, let's say you're already being given a squawk. Uh, you could maybe call up and say, London, good evening, easy, 252 Whiskey, we are flight level 360 approaching Sabre, and, or approaching Logan, for example. And you could add CPDLC onto the end of that. So you could say, easy, 252 Whiskey, flight level 360 approaching Logan, CPDLC. And then as soon as you said that, then send the log on. Again, it's slightly different to requesting a pre-departure clearance in the place that you go and notify the controller that you are connected up on CP at CPDLC when you're airborne it's slightly different and it's a slightly different menu to what you get when you're requesting a pre-departure clearance so through your aircraft you're going to get different instructions you're going to get headings you're going to get climbs you're going to get uh, directs you're going to get uh, speeds you're going to get frequency changes to different frequencies uh and those will all come via your plane and again you're massively helping out the controller by reducing an already busy frequency and when you become an overflight the controller then doesn't have to focus as much on you and can focus on the aircrafts that are a little bit lower down at the bottom end of the sector and give them more time because they do need more management in terms of turning them onto the ILS giving them nice vectors descending them and yada 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 so that is sort of on route ATC and CPDLC in the next part of the video, you're sort of going to see how it works. So welcome back. Hopefully the uh, the intro bit was quite useful in terms of talking to you about how we're now going to connect to the controller that we're on 
now rare ball so we're just passing through 20,000 feet now and on your screen you can see in the controller information so the controller that's controlling london central at the moment is that his cpdlc is available flight level 195 so in the intro bit we talked about obviously how at different levels the cpdlc is available so in some places you might get cpdlc available through uh flight level 190 you may get cpdlc available through flight level 310 it very much depends and you've got to check the controller information to see what the level is so how we connect up to cpdlc when we're on route so you come down to the same display which we're uh, we're going to come do uh, come going to come do kind of going to come down to in here. So we're going to go to the do menu. We're going to go to the Atsu menu. Uh, so remember with the pre departure clearance, we went into the AOC menu. This time we're going to be going into the ATC menu. So we're going to hit the ATC menu, and we're going to go connection, and we're going to go notification. And you'll see this box is so we've got our ATC flight number, easy two five two whiskey, which is already put in. We don't need to put that in ourselves. That's pulled from your. Uh, from your muck do so when you've put in your flight plan so you see 252 whiskey and glasgow uh stanford glasgow an atc center so remember back to that code we were talking about this is where that code becomes useful so we're going to type in lima oscar november charlie which was the uh the cpdlc logon code and we're going to hit notify and what you'll see is now you've got something that says next atc london c and then it'll say london c notified and 2220 zulu so that's obviously the current time in which we've uh, we've requested the logon with London. So that's good. You that when you get that time, that means the CPDLC has gone through correctly, and the controller should reply back to that now on uh, and and connect us up. So we've got to make sure we've got the uh, we've got the frequency still unmuted. So remember, CPDLC just because you are on CPDLC doesn't mean that you can't have you can't not listen you've still got to make sure that you're listening to the frequency and paying attention for any calls that can't come through on cbdlc and uh and make sure if you do miss anything that you listen on voice because there are some messages that can't physically come through cbdlc so you'll remember the uh the message that we got on uh on the ground when we got the pre-departure clearance we got the the uh the blue atc message thingamajiggy and it made like sort of a sound that is again the exact same thing that we're waiting on and the first thing that we should get from the controller is the uh the log on the log on exception so hopefully give it a uh, give it a minute or two and fraser will accept us onto that there you go so that's exactly the noise that we were looking for so again the same things as we got on the ground and it's our uh, it's our connection up onto cbdlc so what we're going to do is we're going to click that in to uh, to get rid of the warning and then we're going to come down to here and we are going to close that so the first message that we've got is log on accepted again you've got to do absolutely nothing with that and uh, we're going to close that down and then you get a second message which basically says the uh, the atc unit that you connect to and uh, we're going to close that now basically what we're going to wait for is future messages from uh from fraser which will come for our plane so we're going to get climbed we're going to get directs we're going to get headings we're going to get a few different instructions that are going to be sent via the plane and uh what it's basically doing is it not only helps myself but it also helps the controller if they're on a really busy frequency and if they've got a really busy frequency they don't have to talk to pilots as much so if we come down here, we've got a we've got climbed flight level three six zero is the level that we've been cleared to by uh, by London, which is our final cruise level. So we're going to uh, there you go, you hear that? Then you get a couple of different options. You get unable, standby, or Wilco. So we're more than happy to accept three six zero. So we're going to hit Wilco and send that up there. Excellent and received by AC. And again, we'll close that message because we don't need uh, we don't need that just yet. And what we're going to do. Now we've uh, now we've been cleared up to flight level three six zero. We will go up here, and we'll go and uh, we'll go and hit him three six zero. And then that is your first uh, that is your first message through CBDLC. Again, helps myself, helps the controller if he's got an already busy frequency. One thing that is important to remember as well that we said in the intro is that CBDLC connection in the air. You can't just connect up. 
without calling the controller. You've still got to make sure that you contact the controller first so they can identify you. And then when they've identified you, then you can go and connect up. So many people make the mistake of connecting up to CPDLC and then not calling the controller first. So that's obviously an important thing to do. And obviously you can connect up obviously a little bit higher than what we could on departure. So if you're flying into the sector, for example, you would call up and then connect up. And here we go, another message. So AT message, we'll go and click that button in again. Come down here and we're going to fly heading 35 degrees. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to go Wilco, which I assume is due with traffic. Again, same message. If you're unable to do that, it could be unable due to weather. You would reply unable. Uh, you could maybe back that up with voice and say, we're unable to do that because of weather or whatnot. So we're going to fly heading 350 as instructed by the controller. Close that message down there. And we're going to now set in our plane heading 350 degrees. Which will start the right turn. So you're still seeing how it's all working. The messages that we're getting are exactly the same messages that you would usually get on voice. But instead of getting them through on voice, we're getting them through on uh, via the plane. It's very cool. It's really cool that you can do this. And they use it a lot IRL. And it helps you. It helps the controllers when you're flying through a really busy sector on the VATSIM network. And there you go. That's uh, that's our third message with CPDLC. So we've had a uh, we've had a climb instruction. We've had a heading, and I assume that uh, the most likely this one is going to be direct. Yeah, there you go. So we're going to proceed direct to Ribble. So a really big direct there, actually. Uh, again, we're more than happy to accept that direct. Let's just quickly check that we've got Ribble in our flight plan. Yes, so we've got Ribble in our flight plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to execute that insert, and we'll go. Uh, We'll go and send that back to Fraser. Again, received by AC, close. And then basically what you're hearing when when we are getting these messages, the controller is busy dealing with people on the ground. He's busy dealing with people that are lower level. People at this upper level don't require as much intense communication, whereas people on the ground being vectored to a runway require a little bit more. So what we're basically doing is reducing the time that it takes that, that he needs to spend with us. So hopefully you're still with me towards the back end of this CPDLC video. Hopefully it's been a really insightful one and you now know how to go and grab a pre-departure clearance. You also know how to go and grab a uh, connection to the on-route controllers via CPDLC and how to use that properly. Again, if there are any bits that I've missed, do make sure you check the comments. I'll probably pin a comment uh, to the top of the comment section for anything that I missed. A few little bits that I may need to add in Uh that will help you using CPDLC. But again, I'll leave a link to the uh, the Hoppies ACOS a code request website in the description below. I'll also leave a link to Easy CPDLC. Remember, that's the program in which you can download if your aircraft doesn't have that functionality natively built in. So obviously, make sure you go and use that when you are connected up to the network and you do want to fly with CPDLC. But thank you for watching. I very much hope you enjoyed the video hopefully it's been a useful one for you and as always do make sure you like make sure you subscribe and i look forward to seeing you on youtube again in the very near future for another video take care guys